my own gums. What is happening, my mates? I'm Thomas Griffin. This is my own gums, and on this week's ep, I am back up at Native in Manchester and chatting with the brilliant artist Stanley Chow. Stan is a Manchester legend. Known for his iconic illustrative portraits, his work is everywhere. From the pages of football fanzines and the walls of Manchester's most storied venues to the cover of the New York Times and in Time magazine. Stan's been at the bleeding creative edge of this city for the past three decades and I'm buzzing to talk to him about the changing styles and cultures he's been a part of. If you love this app, then drop us a comment on YouTube or a review on Apple Podcasts. Or I think you can do comments on Spotify Podcasts, so get on that. Get at us on the socials and let us know what you thought we are at my own games everywhere. Cool, let's do it. This is this week's app with Stan Chow. <laughs> You know what it is? Stan, welcome to my own arms. Thanks for coming, man. I'm quite flattered to be asked. <laughs> <laughs> Good, man. Looking immaculate today. Oh, thank actually. you, cheers. One uh, iconic Stan Chow roll next, yep. which I'm very pleased to see. <laughs> How are you? Have you had a nice morning? It's been all right morning. I, I mean, admittedly, I was, I was a little... Something I was a little self-conscious in what, what I decided to wear this morning. I mean, <laughs> for something I'm not self-conscious about, having been invited on, the, on this show and then knowing what to wear was kind of like a, an issue for a bit. And my wife said, oh, you look, you look fine. You look great, man. So, um, so yeah, I, I stuck with that. Tell us uh, about your uh, Siri mishap earlier. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. It's like, hey, Siri, um, uh, what's the weather today? It's like, it's like, the lowest would be two degrees, highest 13 degrees. And I was like, guys, man, <laughs> you know, it's like, you, I can't, when you give me such a like a, a big range, I can't decide what, what to wear. You I mean so, that's t-shirt to duffel coat like span, yeah. isn't it? If the top range was lower, I would have worn a t-shirt underneath this. Yeah, but I just kind of like it looks sunny, so I kind of like kept it like low on layers. And the layer, the layering is paramount in weather like this. And oh, yeah, yeah, having that cardigan that you yeah. can whip on and off for yeah, yeah. warmth and breathability. <laughs> I believe the start of your career grew out of a love of fashion illustration. Can you talk to us a little bit more about that? Well, I had a friend and she was obsessed with, well, she was obsessed with Vogue magazine, you know what I mean? Yeah. And because and, 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 I spent a lot of time with, like, um, with her, she was called Eva. I just got into, like, looking at the, ma like, the magazine, you know. I mainly got more inter interested in looking at the supermodels. Yeah. The time, you know, <laughs> Cloudy Schiffer, you know, Cindy Crawford. But, like, but it, it was almost kind of like, it got me kind of excited, you know. It's just, uh, like, so, creatively, at, you know. at that young age, it's such yeah. an exotic thing, Vogue yeah. magazine. Like, yeah. so different to the world that I inhabited. Yeah. Yeah. But I can see how, how it was massively yeah. exciting. So that went on to you kind of sketching and... Yeah, just kind of, yeah, you know, just drawing people in clothes, you know what I mean? That was like, I mean, I drew loads of stuff, but like, it wasn't just so much kind of drawing people in clothes. It got me into, into clothes in terms of like... The clothes I was buying or the clothes my parents bought me just weren't good enough, so I customised them, you know what I mean? You know? It kind of like touched the creative side of me that, that I probably didn't know. It's like I knew I was good at drawing, but but I didn't really know kind of like fashion was a thing I was into at all whatsoever, you know. So you're handy with a sewing machine then? No, I wish I was. Uh, I mean, like, I could I, I, I could hand sew stuff, you know what I mean? Hand stitch stuff. Buttons on and stuff. Yeah, yeah, but I was never kind of, it was, it was too noisy. It's like, <laughs> it, the, the, the sewing machine noise, you know, it, it gives it's me the shivers. violent, isn't it? Yeah, it's, but it's like, a, it's like a vacuum cleaner. There are two noises which I can't stand, you know? <laughs> Yeah, some people get that like zen calm when they're yeah. sewing and stuff like that, but it's, I think I'd have to have earmuffs yeah. on if I was going to do that. But, but it, it kind of it kind of starts from there. It really it, it really peaks of an interest in fashion because of, because of Vogue magazine. Okay. And and then there's also like, whilst I was still at sixth form, Vogue magazine had this um, uh, uh, illustration awards, Cecil Beaton illustration awards. And, right. um, I mean, I, I was kind of wasn't good enough to even enter, but the guy that won was Jason Brooks, who is like a, a well-renowned fashion illustrator now and he's like like for me he's like godlike at the, when like when i was in my early 20s you mm -hmm. know and he ended up doing like um really cool club um flyers as well as part of his like like work really kind of make making the mark in in the fashion world you know so i can see like from from fashion illustration it's like taking sh shapes like uh, geometric shapes and yeah. stuff and pattern cutting and a lot of your work that you do today is like boiling organic natural forms down to yeah. kind of more geometric shapes do you yeah. think your early forays into fashion drawing have kind of bled into what uh, you do today maybe it, it might do but it's not a conscious thing you know it's like but but, but back then the whole, the whole point of like 
or being a fashion illustrator is to kind of like you've got nice clothes but but you've got to make them look nicer on the on the illustration you I mean yes. you are literally just copying clothes that you've just been given you mean it's not it's not like i'm not designing anything yeah i mean i was doing work for like the star magazine in the sunday times and i was and I was doing a bit of work for like Marks and Spencers, but essentially you're giving the clothes to just illustrate on on a person and make them look nice, really. So, was your first interest in clothes was that like tied up with when you were started reading the magazine? Is that the first thing time you felt excited, or did you, from an, a really early age, kind of have a a passion for the stuff that you were wearing? Well, with clothes, there's always a case of like um, going to the shop with my mum, mm. and like and. And it was a case of me telling her what I wanted to do. Okay. I do remember the, 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 there was a time from when I was like 14, 15, when I was getting pocket money. And I was, that's when I was going out and buying my own clothes, really. And, uh, there was a, uh, and, I re and I do remember it was a, that split quite... quite um, definitive. Definitive, yeah. It, yeah. Was, um, it also reminded me of like, um, I used to play rugby at school. Okay. When I was at rugby school. And my mum was kind of also, she was, she was into Gucci. So she, she she had a few Gucci bags and like um, I don't know if you buy a Gucci bag, it comes with a, like a little cloth bag that says that has the, the Gucci logo on. Hessy and sack kind of yeah, storage yeah, bag yeah. thing. Yeah. So what I'll do is, with them is like I'll I'll basically ask my mum, can I have this bag? Because you don't need this bag, you mean? Know? So I'll cut out the Gucci logo. Yeah. And I'll stitch the Gucci logo onto my um, onto my rugby shirt. So for like three years, like like my school rugby <laughs> shirt was like a a pretend Gucci. That's so flat. Yeah. Like yeah. That. I, I used to kind of, um, you know, like this kind of elasticated at the end of it, the, the cuffs, basically. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll always cut off the cuffs on my rugby shirts as well. So it's so it three quarter lengths. It wasn't just kind of like buying clothes. It was literally kind of like, I can actually create my own kind buying of... Buying a raw material. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Interesting. In the last like 10 years or so, um, clothes customising has uh, maybe resurfaced yeah. a bit. But I think in the 70s and 80s, maybe that people did that? Do you think people did that more than they did in the, the off-the-shelf? Well, did, you, did you feel like there were other people doing that when you did No, it, definitely not. Well, well, I guess there must be, because it's like, because I was buying plain T-shirts and just drawing on them anyway, you see. I mean, yeah. designs on them. So, and, and fabric paints exist at the time, so so other people must have must have done them, but I guess I was inspired by by something, but I wasn't exactly, I couldn't tell you exactly where the inspiration came from, but I just knew it was like, what I actually ha was wearing just wasn't good enough mm. to the point where I had to kind of what, actually adapt it myself, you know, as a, like a, this was, a, I was literally like 13, 14, you know, and I felt like the need to... Hip hop, the remix mindset, man. Well, yeah, maybe, yeah, that's what it is. Postmodernism yeah. at play. <laughs> Rep your ends. Stan, you're a proud Mancunian. Can you tell us a little bit about what you think defines Manchester stylistically and where you yourself fit in amongst that kind of melee? Oh my God, it's like, I think I think Manchester now is like, there, there, I don't think there is a style, it's a mishmash. It's like, mm -hmm. we, we reached a point where like, um, everyone's kind of lifted the best bits from the 80s onwards and everyone's trying to build that. I mean, okay, I, I watch the football a lot, so, so, at the football, there, there is a defining fashion in football, which is like the knockoff North Face, Stone Island, Canada Goose, puffer jacket wearing crew, always black, you know, hoodies and black hoodies as well, you know, so, so there's a defined fashion there. But being a creative, I do hang around with essentially more creative people, and there's like, there's the kind of like, um, it's like a watered down hipster vibe, you know what I mean? There was okay. a kind of like, you know, maybe 10 years ago when the hipster vibe was really strong, it's kind of like everyone's. Everyone took it on board, but then they just kind of like and by that mellowed mean, like, out. You mean know? beard, glasses? Yeah. What but, else were we talking? Well, yeah, like well, the Northern Quarter ultra hipster. Ultra hipster was like was like like the uh, the dungarees, like yeah. three quarter dungarees, like sandals, you know, like w white t shirt or even granddad t shirt, you know, and like they always wear the little hat or some man bun. Yeah, like, round, yeah. <laughs> like round glasses and a big beard. But now yeah. like him. Um, the glasses seem to be less round. The beards are less, or, or more heavy stubbles now. You mean? Know? I'm best not dig out pictures of me from 12 years. Just <laughs> yeah. describe me to yeah. the T there. I didn't get the tats though. Right, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, really, uh, and yeah. There's loads of people, yeah, with, with tats as well. And uh, but there's that. There's, you can see the influences of that now mm. in, in in the in the fashions that I, you know. The people that I hang around with, and also like there's the there's the oil the oil poly fashion, you know, the Fair Perry's um, and very brand centric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like with the um, 
cappuccinos and white white trains a lot. You know, but but it's all but it's all mishmash now. You know what I mean? Like everyone's taking a bit of everyone else. You mean you know? I think you get that in the in the uh, metropolises of the north, yeah. like Liverpool's got a similar kind of. Um, Mishmash of yeah, yeah, styles in Manchester yeah. and maybe Leeds to a lesser yeah. extent, but. but I think Leeds though, Leeds, I still think Leeds to this day is was the um, where it all began, the hipster vibe. Okay. I remember going back into. Tell back me about this. I, know, I would not have picked that at all. Yeah. But. Well, I went to Leeds. I didn't go to Leeds, but my friends, I had friends who went to Leeds University, like in the in the early nineties, and like it, it was the first time I've ever seen someone have a man bun. Right. And then it was also the first time I've been seeing people who were like. Lots of people wearing like, like like rolled up jeans basically, and yeah, yeah. W- 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 with no socks and and, and loafers. You know, what I mean? you know, it was a, it was like this is completely. I've not seen this before ever. Even in Manchester. Not, yeah, even in Manchester. Yeah, but it's all it's all happening in Leeds. You know. Okay, I live over that way now, so oh, yeah. I maybe I, I missed out on that. Yeah. But I always thought it was Leeds was kind of copying what went on in Manchester. But that's no, really no, interesting. No, to no. Me. Def- definitely something that wasn't going on in Manchester. You know, what I, mean? you know I think like even that that age, we were just coming out of the whole. Manchester rave like you know mm. it was like um, yeah the, the vibe here is nowadays it's just it's very eclectic you know, you know? yeah the, going back to like the 90s it, it was defined in terms of like there were goths you can tell who, who the goths were Athletics Palace crew yeah who the skaters were yeah you know, yeah. know? and like it, it was all defined by music really you know, you know? like in, in your taste in music was kind of define what kind of clothes you wore really. and where did say in the 90s when it was more stratified yeah. into these different like subcultures yeah. where did you yourself find your your home your like I fashion was, home well i think it was like i was kind of like a a grungy metal kid yeah like in in the early 90s and and then when i got into art school i got into the acid jazz vibe okay you know, like jamiroquai basically it was like um kind of wearing retro clothes in your gazelles you know there's all there's a kind of like sports casuals plus kind of nice kind of like um with nice flared flared cords and and like kind of sent you 70s suede jackets you know, you know so a lot of retro yeah. kind of notes in it yeah, yeah yeah art school i went i did music at, at university yeah. and i think music students dress like shit the, the, right. uh, uh, me included like <laughs> but when i look at art school kids yeah. i think out of any of the subjects that you can yeah. cover they're the ones who've got it dialed man they've got such a keen aesthetic yeah. eye like well, well e- e- even now is that like you know a dj at yes still now and again mm. uh, like and which is kind of up the road and um you can tell who the art school kids are immediately because they've just kind of got, got this they've got this kind of like confidence in wearing kind of just going a bit mad you mean yeah. and you know like what they're wearing now is like is what will be a toned down version of what everyone will be wearing in five, five, six years time, yeah. you know. So growing up as a second generation immigrant in Manchester, was there a friction between how your parents wanted you to dress and how you yourself wanted to dress? I don't think so really, because everything they bought me, I generally quite liked, you see. I yeah. think my mum understood my kind of taste and, and knew what... In fact, my mum probably even kind of like um, conditioned my own taste you know you kind of like um, she sounds like a stylish woman she was pretty stylish i'd say before she came to, over to england she works in the clothing industry oh, kind really? of like 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 tailor not tailoring you know she's Clock a seamstress cutting. yeah you know so she has an idea of what what suit suits me you know yeah but also she's a knitter as obviously so there was a two-way thing going on where like if she was going to knit knit me a sweater she'll ask me what colors i wanted and and she'll give me the patterns and let me choose what patterns would like have that i wanted like wanted for my sweatshirts and cardigans that sounds I like a pretty powerful formative yeah. experience there so yeah no it was, there was kind of but that, you know and i guess by the time i was 13 14 and when i had my own pocket money mm. I, I was trusted enough to kind of wear what i, where I wanted you know whereabouts in manchester were you living at this time i was kind life? of living more stockport way okay yeah, at the time, yeah. i was probably allowed to go to manchester on my own at like yep. 13 or 14 that's yep. when i could first go to places like Affleck's palette because i was yeah. a little mosher as well yeah. so that's, that's where i could get my nirvana t-shirts yeah. from did you have the run of the city at that kind of age was that an exciting yeah thing yeah, Af- yeah. To- Affleck's palace was actually kind of um it was a place i used to go to a lot really you know i'm buying buying t-shirts actually you just reminded me of something i had a guns and roses t-shirt yeah the classic uh, the- like Big uh, logo. No, it wasn't the logo. Go it was, on. It's the one where the, the God. This sounds really awful, but it's where the robot was. 
was assaulted the this young woman. <laughs> <laughs> you know, where he, he's got this young woman in half. I know the one, gross. And like on this weird kind of, yeah, it's like... Sexual politics are different yeah, in the LA, LA rock scene, I think. Yeah, obviously, I took that home, my mum saw that and it's like, you're not wearing nah, that. Nah, man. I mean, you know, Scuns and Roses. I know. <laughs> you know, well, yeah. I had a Snoop Dogg t-shirt with yeah. like all the uh, hyper-sexualised dog women on yeah. it. You know, I think it's the Doggy Style album yeah. cover. And I was, took that home and they're like, <laughs> yeah, no, no. Yeah. but yeah it must be pretty exciting as a kid to be able to go into a city and buy things that you've only yeah. ever seen in Vogue magazines oh, yeah, sure, like yeah. that so but yeah but I do remember like like it was, it was going into places like Next you know what I mean I wasn't going into places like Marks and Spencer's with my mum mm. or British Home Stores or CNA it was like oh Next Top yeah. Man Burton's yeah. yeah you can look sharp you can look yeah. crisp in Top Man in the 80s yeah. and 90s. so we talked about your mum a little bit there I saw a picture of your old man yeah. on your Instagram uh, wearing a lovely roll neck sweater yeah which you've obviously inherited yeah. the love of was there any other kind of um, sartorial leanings that you, you took from your dad because he looked great in that yeah. picture yeah I, I, my dad was he, he was cool he was cool as fuck you know, you know and like um, admittedly when the 80s hit he kind of didn't know what, what was going on I don't think he was seventies cool. He was seventies cool and sixties right. cool as well. Yeah. You know, you know, but he did have like a suit jacket, like from the late sixties that that I inherited. Like when I was kind of reaching my kind of like mid twenties at age, like I kind of rummaged through his wardrobe and found this. Wow, oh, this suit jacket is mm. really cool. It's like a little got like pinstripes and herringbone pinstripes kind of, and it was just a little bit too tight. It was like Alexis Sale tight. Yeah, but it just looked cool on me yeah. so you mean know, enough and so for maybe about four or five years that was my kind of like going out uh jacket you know yeah that's the thing that really sticks out as as a thing that i took from my dad you mean know it's so cool to be able to yeah. wear the actual clothes that yeah. you're for i remember getting a coat my girl like a duffel coat with my granddad's yeah. just the fact that it's got that story of yeah. where it's come from it's yeah. like it's more it's it's better oh, yeah, than yeah. a new one in it yeah. i mean i was i was gutted i was gutted when it kind of like it basically just it was just falling apart you mean yeah. you know, it, it was it, it got to a point where it was unsalvageable yeah I mean, you know what I mean? even by with your skilled repair yeah, yeah i know skills. yeah there's holes in the jacket and then like the arms were falling off and there's like also i was getting a bit chunky as well yeah so it literally <laughs> couldn't actually like i know mean, i spent i spent like years trying to find a replacement for it you mean know, but like you couldn't find it because the cuts were in like in the mid midnight, it was just different. You mean know, it was kind of like it kind of like tapered in, or like in the in the waist area. Yeah, but, flared at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Bit. But then it was like you know you you're buying like trying to buy suit jackets at that time. They're all kind of straight down. You know, boxy. You know, it's kind yeah. of like so we couldn't. Yeah, it was a, it was a disappointment to me when. Is it been preserved in pictorial form? Could you get it recut oh. from a skilled tailor? You know what? If I I mean the problem with back then is is like it was just before the. The smartphone in here, so mm. there's not enough like um, you know photographic reference of me. But you know, if I if I dug deep enough in, in my old photographs, I might be Get able to find a flick through albums. Out. Yeah, yeah, you know. Just tell me a little bit about Manchester in the eighties and nineties. Right. It must have been a very exciting place to be a creative, because um, like music was popping off, fashion was popping off, all kinds of other cultural. Yeah. It was like at the, the the forefront of yeah. everything hip and happening. Was it an exciting time for you? And what kind of stuff were you wearing then? Well, I think it was. I think it was exciting. Well, no, I think eighties and nineties. There's a big, there's a big cut off between eighties and nineties. Okay. Where where we eighties was definitely kind of, I was probably definitely still like 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 CNA, Topshop, British Home Stores. You mean know, it it was I hadn't hadn't like um, I don't think the actual music scene had actually kind of infiltrated into my fashion sense. Then, yeah. You mean know, but then when I got into art school. Which is kind of like we're talking about ninety two now, ninety one, ninety two. Yeah, that's when you know you could you could see what you could see what's happening. You know, you're going out. There were lots of kind of like old school sixties and seventies nights playing kind of um kitsch lounge music, and that all kind of fed into the whole kind of acid jazz scene. Then there was like Jamiro Quiet out of that, you know, and then I think yeah, I think he was a. He played a weird kind of like influence on me. You mean such an odd dress? Yeah, incredible dress. Talk about yeah. king of tracksuits, like yeah. smashed it out of the park yeah. with the, with the all the um, the matching sets. Oh yeah, I mean yeah yeah. I mean again, I, I love tracksuits. You know, I, 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 I probably is Jamiroquai that kind of got me into. But you know, but also but also just footballers in general. You mm. know, it's like watching them train is like in tracksuits and stuff. You know, being a big Man United fan is like all oh, these influences, and then you kind of like. 
but yeah, no, the, but but at that scene, you, you could definitely see the whole kind of like um, the arse end of the actual the rave scene and the the the, the Manchester scene, where like um, I mean, it's not something I got into, even though I did like um, buy a pair of like super mega flares, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, you, you you can't even see your your feet, you know. Perfect like, for a wet wet Manchester yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Soaked up to the knee. But like um, but. But also, I think like you know, because I was kind of at art school, like um, you know, art students are the, the forefront of creativity, really. I mean, and like you can see that like the students were just kind of dressing in something slightly different than the rest of society. And and for me, it's kind of like I want to kind of be as cool as cool as them. You know what I mean, it was cool because it was different. I mean, you could probably look back at it and thought like that's a bit, you know. A bit weird, you know what I mean? It's a bit kind of weird in what, like trying too hard to be different. Yeah, yeah, trying too hard to be different. You know, like, like I think, yeah, I think your average bloke on the street would look at that like, no way would I, you know, want to dress like that. You know, but yeah. where for me is like, whoa, that's kind of like I want to try that. You know what I mean? I think everyone feels like that yeah. when they're young, don't they? Like railing against what yeah. exists at the moment, and it's dead healthy. Yeah, it helps you experiment. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned acid jazz there and going out to these. I know yeah. you're a DJ yourself. Were you DJing at that time? No, I, this was before I was DJing. I was just th th this was kind of the time I was collecting the records. Yeah, in, in the hope to be a DJ at one point. You know, you know. Yeah. So acid jazz yeah. is something that's always confused me. Like, yeah. is Jamara Jamara's choir the kind of archetypal acid jazz crossover hit? Is it like electronic versions of jazz? I'm a bit confused I about think, it. I, th I think it's I think it's pop, poppy, poppy versions of soul, soul jazz tunes. You yeah. know, the, the whole the, the brand new heavies and and Jamiroquai and Galliano are the first kind of bands that I've, I, acts that I think of. But like, but once you get into them, you kind of you kind of like follow where the, where that music came from, and it's all Herbie Hancock, Miles Davis, mm. and it's um, so I think it's just popular. It's just jazz made. Turn into pop form, I guess. You mean, you know? And does it feel like that clothes and fashion play a big part in that particular music scene? The like the performative element. Uh, you know, JK always dressed yeah. like incredibly for his yeah. performances, and it it does something else to you when you watch yeah. him. You know? Oh, totally. Yeah. Well, there's that, and then brand new heavies. They they always got down and really kind of in their kind of seventies disco. Big flares, yeah. Big glasses, big afros. You know what I mean? You know, that style kind of infiltrated into like the, their audience. You know what I mean? You know, it became kind of like, I mean, like the whole kind of disco scene vibe with big, big collars, and it, it did become like a fashion and like, um, but like, but mainly in kind of like um, second hand shops. Really, you know what I mean? This is when Afrix Palace really came into its own. Really, you know what I mean? You know, it sold all the the rave scenes, but also kind of catered for all the other little kind of like. Um, like like subcultures, you know. You it know. really was a mecca. Like yeah. you could go if you were a skater. Yeah. You could go if you were a hip hop fan. Yeah, you could totally. Go if yeah. you were a goth kid. Yeah. You could go if you were a cyber raver. Exactly. There's yeah. that shop on your right as you went in that had all like the uh, electronic t-shirts that had yeah. pulse blue and stuff in their eyes. <laughs> I remember that one. Can we talk about another kind of Manchester music scene yeah. that's uh, I've not got much of an understanding. Oh, yeah. I'm like baggy. Um, yeah, my I, rough understanding is that a big mixture of yeah. casual and yeah. rave and hippie and stuff. Is that something that is that a scene that you were kind of part of? No, well, yeah, well, again, I was like, I, I did buy the baggy jeans, just, but they end up being my kind of like painting jeans, basically. You know, it's like if I was going to paint, I'd always wear them. But essentially, like, 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 like if you break down baggy to, to, to how I would describe it, it was literally like a, a big oversized, like t-shirt with a band with a band print on it you know what mm. I mean they'll be in spiral carpets or james or stone roses or whatever or even that a rave happy face yeah you know? yeah it had to be a music inspired like like, like long sleeve tea where where, where it, had, it had no cuffs basically they had to be they had to be loose and baggy. baggy yeah you know there, there was a be, there'll be the bucket hat mm. and yeah and and, the, and and the jeans as well music was the core of the of the fashion it's a great way to communicate your Tastes and your yeah. personality to, to other people yeah. in the group, and it like a band yeah. T-shirt. Yeah. I love it when someone notices a band T-shirt, especially yeah. if it's one that you've worn that's just yeah, for the heads. Yeah. Like, oh, is that a Sunrise T-shirt? Like, yeah, yeah man, that's <laughs> you know, yeah. it feels great and it yeah. feels you feel part of a community. I think. Oh yeah. yeah. That's not me. You've lived through a few different eras and trends. Are there any that you look back on and think? That was a bit of a clanger that. Well, this is going back to the um, like the scene that I knew the whole kind of like um, like the acid jazz scene where 
you are trying like you are going to the to, to, to the second hand shop or you're going to Affleck's and you're buying like big collar shirts and and, and and flares and it's like sometimes the flares are just too big yeah and you just end up looking like a clown <laughs> you know it looks good when you're trying it on but then when you putting the whole outfit together okay i'm gonna wear my, my big collar shirt here big i'm a flare jeans and it's like oh my god I look absolutely ridiculous <laughs> so, so so i think like this is where you kind of learn how to kind of like where you where you where you're mixing kind of sport casual stuff with 70s second hand stuff you know when you kind of it's a kind of like a grown up period where you've tried that looks crap but you know these jeans are essentially good mm. but the but, but putting it on with this shirt, you look stupid. But if you put on with like a, a nice Adidas top and it looks looks cool, you yeah. know. So, and like, but yeah, so that was the kind of like learning to mix and mix and match, you know. And like, and you can get it, you can easily get it very wrong, but basically, you know. So you got to make those like wholesale mistakes to refine and yeah, to, yeah, totally, yeah. to niche down into what it is that you yeah. want to wear. Because I don't want to actually look, look, want to look like someone from the 70s, you know? Yeah. You know, I don't want to look like, like Jason King or something like that, you know? I want to look like Stanley Chow, but like, you know, this is like, this is the, the cool look of the 1992, you know? I mean? So talking about that, where do you feel like you've settled in terms of your personal style, all those experiments yeah. in the kind of late right. 80s and stuff. Um, I see a lot of timeless Adidas and maybe yeah. some B-boy inspired looks, yeah. a lot of matching sets. Yeah, well, oh, this, this is a really, this is a really, really tricky question. I, I like to look smart like most of the time, but mm. but, I, like, but since lockdown now, like um, I've gone for the really baggy trousers, you mean it's like, like drop crotch, mm. like baggy trousers, you mean it's just because it's like this, just, 10 times more comfortable, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, I'm thinking like, why, why did I wear jeans ever? You know what I mean? When you can wear kind of like really loose, like, like, like loose trousers, you mean it? But in terms of shoes, it is Adidas or, or Converse now, you mean it? And I, and I kind of like, you know, like to wear a smart cardigan like most of the time. And, and like, as you touched on before, like during the autumn winter, it's always a, what was a roll neck? I mean, like, yeah. What do you think of uh, Eric Ten Eric Ten Hag's uh, propensity for the roll neck on the touchline? Well, I, well, I love it. You know, you know, but uh, he, but he gets it's great, man. He gets the piss taken out of him, but by, by, by some quarters. You mean it's, it's like no roll necks are cool. It's, it's, it's a roll necks are like marmite for some weird reason. Mm. You know, I mean, like my wife, like she nearly put me off wearing roll necks because she said I hate I hate roll necks. Like, did you get the milk tray man accusation? Level, right? <laughs> yeah. So I've I've tried a roll neck recently yeah. and everyone's milk tray man, milk tray yeah. man. I was like, I don't even know what that is, man. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, I've I've heard it, but it's you know it's, it's less and less now. I don't think it. I, don't, I think I pull it off in a way where because I'm not as strapping and handsome as the milk tray man. I, okay. I, I can never <laughs> ever even no one could ever even kind of accuse me of, of pretending to be him. You mean you know? But no, yeah. Like and my wife said, she didn't like like roll necks, but, but like um, I still kind of carried on wearing them. You mean? Know? And I think she does. I think she's I think she's changed the tune now. Okay. You mean? Know? Seduced by the roll neck. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, quite yeah. a dashing look, man. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no worries. Um, so another influence that we have kind of touched on, but is football. You're a yeah. Mad United fan. I've seen. I think I've seen you um, maybe six or seven years ago having a pint after the match. In that, what's that? Like club that's got a bowling green outside of it. Old Trafford Bowling Club. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I've seen you in there after a match. I was yeah. like, oh, there's Stan Chow over there. Yeah. Like, so oh, yeah. we had a little chat before about football yeah. kits. But what's your favourite era or your most kind of uh, archetypal era of football kit? It was the early Adidas kind of like Admiral, where there was an Admiral in the 1980s, late 70s, and then. But well, they made United kits, did they? Yeah, yeah. And they make a really cool kit, and there's like it's the one with the kind of like like a you know flappy collar. Yeah, like um, that was a with that, like the white triangle in the middle, and then the white collar. Yeah, 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 it's just a simple United, the United badge and the Adidas logo, and that's it. W without the sponsor, you know what I mean? Yeah, that was the, that was always kind of like that was the first get I had, and I guess it's like I, I guess I love nostalgia so much that that I can I can never kind of get away from that one being, being one of my favourite kits basically yeah I agree I think you, you you formative years like when I look at a Liverpool kit yeah. that kind of like uh, three massive stripes on the shoulder yeah. the candy one yeah. candy yeah. That's, that was my first experience of Liverpoolness yeah. so that's what I think of when I think of a Liverpool kit when yeah. I think of a United kit it's sharp sponsor yeah. uh, it's the Adidas yeah. one 
or the Umbro ones a little right. bit later on. I suppose about like Mark Hughes yeah. Adidas era yeah. one, and they kind of baked hard into you. I remember when United went from Nike back to Adidas. It felt yeah. like a real oh, yeah. affirmation. Of oh the yeah, past kind yeah. Of thing. I think every United fan was like every United fan who grew up in the eighties was like we've been after this for ages. You know, it's like. It, it was a it was a, a lovely like you know reunion you know unfortunately it's like I, I really ended up hating the the Adidas new logo the equipment logo you know what I mean it's like I, I still love the the, the, the trefoil oil. yeah so, so so to lose it so it, it was bittersweet yeah you know what I mean having Adidas back a, a, as a United kit but then to lose the trefoil was like okay I can, it's bearable you know I yeah can, I can I can I can just sort of handle it you know, you know yeah but I love Nike. As a yeah. brand, I love Nike trainers, but when United went to Nike, it felt like a real denial of their own. It felt like they were sure, yeah. selling out to corporate America than, yeah, yeah. Like, than what they'd had. Yeah, it's mad what you yeah, think about agree, yeah. <laughs> A load of money in it. Yeah. <laughs> Top three selected. Stan, you've done portraits of some of the world's most iconic stars, from yeah. Cantona and Pirlo in the sports yeah. world, uh, to Prince and Ian Brown yeah. in the music world. Can you give me a top three most stylish people that you've drawn? Uh, portraited I'd say Debbie Harry would would be number one pure icon yeah she I mean like the, the, I've done an illustration of her with um, she's wearing like a, a raglan t-shirt with the, the vultures on it's like when that picture of her was taken when she's wearing a, it was back in the 70s but like but to kind of like but looking at that t-shirt it's still this is my my retro sensibility is kind of happening you know kind of like that kind of baseball style t-shirt with the kind of like you know, different coloured sleeves, you know, I love them t-shirts, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, but Debbie Harry just looks so cool in that t-shirt, so that's why it illustrated her wearing that, you know, and that logo is really cool. She's such an icon. Yeah. Like, the, the pitch, she always looks incredible. She's so photogenic. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, and that must be a gift to someone that comes to illustrate, someone yeah. who can really pull out those iconic features yeah, and yeah. stuff. And I think still has an influence on, Yeah. like when people yeah. think of an iconic rock yeah. woman, it's yeah. Debbie Harry, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, so who else? Spike Lee, I mean, like, um, talk about someone who wears glasses, yeah. Spike Lee, I mean, it's like, I mean, like, we, t we talked about Run DMC glasses, but you know, Spike Lee still wears the big, big glasses, you know. What I mean, you know, it's like in his mid late 50s now, if he can pull it off, and mm. I can pull off wearing big, big, thick rim, <laughs> you know. but, but but the thing is, like, he his fashion is very kind of much like he's the kind of guy that he likes to wear like a nice, stylish hat. Yeah. But also wears like sports gear as well. Yeah, so, you know, man. He mixes the whole s s n nice tailored stuff and sports gear really well. So, you know. A little like yourself, maybe. Yeah, well, this is it. I aspire to, you know, he's a, he's, a, he's a style icon, you know what I mean? You know? Yeah. I think, like, um, Grown up, but unmistakably hip hop, unmistakably, yeah, yeah. like yeah. of that era and that yeah. culture. Yeah, cool. Yeah. I rate that a lot. Yeah. But the kind of guy who goes to a wedding, you know, who, who would wear a nice suit and like big Air Jordan, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, and like, if you get it right, it's, it, it's a look that's kind of hard to get right. I think you know you can look daft in it. Yeah. But some people can. If you just get the right enough other layers, you know, if you get the if you wear a baseball cap as well, it might just work. Or it just depends on what the hat you wear. It kind of balances out the trainer and the rest of the suit. You mean know? But but yeah, generally like you know, Spike Lee kind of kind of looks kind of yeah. good in sportswear. That's proper yeah. style, isn't it? When yeah. you can just make things that are difficult to make work work. Yeah. And who's your final one? I think I say Janelle Monet. Okay. I think she's just kind of. I mean. She's so creative with what she. Yeah, wears, I mean, Janelle. yeah, I mean, like I go on her Instagram. It's like her styles have really changed. I mean, but every style just seems to be kind of like still still work. I mean, I, I mean, obviously when she was wearing her kind of like the suit jacket style, but ten years ago that was yeah. like that was really striking. You know what I mean, with a big quiff, and I was like. Oh, she looks different. You mean, you know, and it's again, referencing the past yeah. uh, in a in a modern way. Yeah, yeah. She's obviously gone a bit more outrageous now, but like, yeah. um, but it's still kind of it just suits just suits the look really. It's yeah. Just, somehow she's just found a nice kind of her and her connection with clothes just 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 work. She's got kind of like Bowie esque reinventive thing yeah, yeah. for her new projects. If she's doing, is it Electric Lady that? album about 10 years ago when yeah, she was yeah. in the suits yeah like she'll dress for that album yeah, yeah. for the tour and yeah. then she'll come into another look yeah. for the next one did you see that video where she was a load of vulvas a load of vaginas called pink kind of rings a bell uh, amazing yeah, so. yeah i'll have to kind of check it out one you know yeah it's a nuts yeah. video as well right, talk yeah. about like creative uh, right, yeah. costuming yeah. They're, they're good Oh, killer top three, man. Like, thanks for not picking any of my uh example ones as well oh right yeah that's a good thing yeah 
So when you're making a portrait of someone, this is kind of related to the different outfits yeah. and stuff, you're distilling an essence of their personality into yeah. a single image. I think I've heard you talk about your process before, and whilst there might be a one master image, yeah. you're also looking at lots and lots of different ones to yeah. look at the nuances of how the face oh, yeah, moves. Yeah. Or, so obviously the clothes that you choose to put them yeah. in for that particular thing uh -huh. can convey something do you think long and hard about what you're going to dress them in or what era you're going to kind of uh, have yeah. them in uh, sometimes you know like um it's, it's more difficult when when you when you're trying to, if you for example you're drawing like a uh, benedict cumberbatch right you know like but you want to kind of make he's quite him, conservative dress yeah but you want him to kind of be sherlock holmes so you have to kind of you have to touch on what version of benedict cumberbatch you're illustrating you see you mean so yeah so fashion is important in terms of helps you indicate what what I'm trying to get at really, you I mean so is it, is is it Benedict Cumberbatch I'm illustrating or is it Sherlock Holmes I'm illustrating? Mm -hmm. You know I mean like if you get the clothes right, it it it, it, it really helps with like um, with how your brain works in terms of like if I get the, if I nail the clothes, it means I don't have to work so hard and getting the likeness because because the clothes have already kind of told you who that person is. Yeah, you know I mean you know so for me the perfect illustration is when I can keep it as simple as possible sometimes with simplicity you lose a lot of what makes the person who that person is but if you can add other elements of clothing and even kind of like the way their shoulder is you can make someone look like someone and yeah. you know who they are without actually looking at, like that person if you don't mind like the, can the Cantona one this, 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 the angle that Cantona's shoulders yeah. are at is very specific to yeah. me and you yeah. captured that yeah. perfectly in that and the, obviously the collar yeah, part yeah. is like yeah. iconically know, yeah. but within that the, mm. the collar and the angle of the shoulder and you know that's just become it becomes very Cantona you mean it's, yeah. so it's, it's as much as the clothes and also the the shape of the clothes because like if you're going to kind of um, illustrate someone who's uptight someone's got an uptight personality you, you you raise your shoulders a bit more so that uptightness adds to that personality so so you've already know that person's uptight so you, or that's already kind of added into the face without you without the face looking up like the person do you know what yeah, i'm trying to say I do, I do. so sometimes you can literally kind of really good character choice can can literally just kind of draw a face with just maybe just dots for eyes and you can and you, you instantly know who it is just because of how the rest of the um, body body is shaped out, you know, you know and the clothes and fascinating, else, man. man. Yeah, I love process. I love art. Like I, l I like looking at art. Yeah. I think I like learning about how people right, yeah. put it together more <laughs> than that. Should we talk a little bit about your illustrative fashion, illustrative past? Yeah. Um, would you ever consider dusting off the kind of fashion illustrative things to design? A capsule collection of Stan Chow clothes. I would love to do that. You know, you know that's kind of. Um, I mean, like, the, to, to, like when I'm not illustrating, I've got my other kind of like um, like side project, which is basically like like buying, designing T-shirts, basically. You know, you know? yeah. And like, it, it started off with kind of um, customizing football shirts, just kind of like football shirts, and I'll just I'll just design a, a badge and and put put a put a kind of a daft sponsor. It's all it's always food related as well. I mean, like, um, I made these T-shirts with, like, um, Don Kebab on, you know, because I think Don Kebab is a stupid sponsor to have. <laughs> it's <laughs> ironic, you mean, know, but, like, it's it's kind of like a take on the kind of, like, having Carlsberg, you know. Yeah. It's, this is football, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you don't want the bloody, you know, like, having bit, you know, it's like having beer advertised on, on a football shirt is just as, having Don Kebab having advertised on a football shirt is just as stupid as having yeah, a yeah. beer advertising, you know, so so I did loads of like t-shirts with Don Kebab on, pie and mash, mm. don't like the, like like, like a, the original logo, like I did an Inter Milan shirt with, um, instead of Pirelli, it was pie and mash. And in the just, font. and the, in, in the font and yeah. stuff like that, you know, that's the side projects that I was doing and like, um, because everyone else is just doing when, when, I, when I say everyone else, there seems to be a lot of people who, who kind of like customising football shirts because it is a, a scene now. I, I kind of like gone to just kind of designing t-shirts now, you mean? I just having like like daft logos on t-shirts, you mean? I'm like, um, if I wasn't wearing this, if it was summer, I would definitely be wearing my own customised, you know, clobber. So this podcast is called My Own Garms yeah. and it comes from a Grimes song. 
yeah. about people wearing their own t-shirts yeah. like when you wear your own stuff do you yeah. feel really like except we talked about customizing your own stuff yeah. and feeling like you've made your own stuff yeah. do you feel kind of powerfully yourself when you're wearing like, I, I, I guess it do, I guess it defies me it, it, it kind of you know I, it's not conscious thing to actually it's semi, it's semi-conscious you know that to wear my own clothes you know, but like um but it's just to, to, to tell people I'm, I'm creative, you know what I mean? Without actually kind of like, literally kind of like, I'm a drawer, yeah. I'm an illustrator. <laughs> but like, you know, so, you know, I just think it's one of those, it's a creative outlet for, like, like for me, you know what I mean? You know, to wear your own clothes, you know what I mean? You know? mm. I mean, I even like, I mean, like going back to before, like before I think I mentioned about having clothes where, well, I've I got, I got long trousers where like, I'll, I'll, I'll get them shortened more than I need to get them shortened, you know what I mean? Because it's like three quarter length, Trousers are better than actual ankle length. You yeah, know, you know, I just You've got fly socks to show off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, so so yeah, no, I've I've always kind of customized clothes, and I, and I still do to a certain degree. You know, and like, but like, but yeah, but yeah, but it, obviously I can't do it with a nice club, but but like, but with t-shirts, you can definitely kind of mm. like, you know. I'll say I'll I'll say fifty percent of the time I'm wearing an, a, my own t-shirt that I design. It's just yeah. something that you've touched in it. Like I find yeah. if I've broken something and then repaired it yeah and you can see the repair yourself yeah. that 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 repair is important to yeah you. like yeah. You, you've imprinted it into your own garden oh yeah absolutely yeah. yeah next hype stan have you got any exciting projects in the pipeline coming up in the kind of fashion clothes sector well more recently is like i've had companies like independent companies sent sending me clothes so so I've kind of accidentally ended up being a an influencer. <laughs> so I've had like a company called Uskies that sent me a a shirt, and then another company called British Boxers who sent me some pajamas, which is great. But more interestingly, is like um, I've been approached by Adidas, and um, I've just done a, a shoot with them. You know, it's actually a, a shoot where you're modelling. I'm like, modelling, yeah, yeah. modelling with a whole with a, like with other influencers as well. I guess we're, we're modelling the um, next season's United's next season's kit see which is a which is pretty mad you know what i mean being a united fan and then the kit get, launch day is yeah. like hotly oh yeah i know yeah when i got the email came through it was like do you want to do this and i was like yeah <laughs> you know so they obviously know that you're a fan yeah can't wait to see that no. so um can you give us any <laughs> can't, yeah i can't tell you what it looks i think as far as i can tell is that i've just done done the shoot with him you know but like but it, it, it is nuts i've seen some of the the rushes and uh and it's like what what's weird is like like I'm nearly fifty, but all the other people in the in the photo shoot are all in their early mid twenties. So so I look like a, look like a dad. <laughs> you know, it's really kind of what that's beautiful, like, man. You know. That's what makes the support base yeah. the support base in it. The kind so, yeah. of variety. But yeah, no. But I guess it's kind of quite um, a bit of a risk take. You know, in terms of get kind of like asking a normal bloke. You know, what I mean, because when I look at myself, I'm a middle aged, slightly chubby. Chinese guy who wears glasses. I'm just not fashion material. I'm not, you know, I'm not f football kit advertising material. Did you feel self conscious yeah. when you were doing the shoot? Yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah, because because yeah. the lad I was with was like six foot and totally good looking and and just slim and, and young. I was like thirty years old, you know, yeah. thirty years on him, and it's like yeah. So so yeah. There was self, bit of self consciousness, you mean? Know, but I kind of enjoyed the day, though, you mean? You know, just you know, trying on different clubs and stuff like that, you mean? You know. Proper childhood dreams. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Amazing, man. I know, but I kind of wished it happened like maybe thirty years ago. But yeah, you know, <laughs> but it's kind of like I know. I, I told my kids, and they're like, "Oh God, Dad, I can't believe you're doing this." You know? <laughs> Living like, my childhood dream. Yeah. yeah, I know exactly. You know, yeah. So, um, but yeah, it was. Um, it's nuts to be asked, nuts to be involved, and but like, it's like being asked on this show is like. I can't believe I'm being asked to, like, like to talk about my my fashion sense. And Why then, not? And yeah, well, no, it's just a surprise. It's not because there's never something I, I, I think about. You know, I mean? it's yeah, just it's like, not your main no, yeah, charm. It's kind of like you know, I love clothes, but it's not not something I kind of like. Never ever would put myself at the forefront of fashion or yeah. or be a fashion icon or anything like that. It's never. I'm just kind of I just wear what I want to wear and just. As long as I'm comfortable in it, that's the most important thing. So to be asked by you, and even, even by, even by kind of the, the those independent clothes labels to to wear clothes, and just stick them on my Instagram is like, okay, you know, I'll well, do people it. people want authenticity, don't you? Yeah, like the reason I ask people who aren't predominantly from the fashion world on this yeah. is because I think the stories are more 
interesting well yeah I, I love the stories of people yeah. that are involved in it first hand but yeah. have it as a kind of second string thing yeah stan thanks a million cool, for doing man. it well, today where can people uh find your t-shirts that you're selling stanleychowfc.com yeah is is the place where you can find my football shirts i mean but then the rest is just literally kind of um Follow you on Insta, all the links yeah. are on there and that yeah, one. Yeah, absolutely, it? yeah. Buzzing, man. Thanks a million for doing it. Appreciate you. You're welcome. What a top, top bloke Stan is. Absolute legend. I love that. Go and buy a print of him. Get your mum and David Bowie for the downstairs toilet. It's stanleychow.co.uk for all your Stan Chow print needs. Right, that is about that for this week. If you want to support us with a little donation, head to patreon.com slash myongarms. And if you want to advertise with us, slide into the DMs. We'll have a chat. Nice one for being here. We will catch you on the next one. So your skills are not got tickets. Hit me. Trust me, it feels amazing. Strangers. Oh, I can't so much by strangers.